The History of the Thong and Pasties. In this episode, I will begin to talk about something I plan to make into a series, the history of strip clubs and stripping. Don't be dissuaded by a history lesson. The origin stories of strip teases, thongs, the ever so extra ultra high heels mostly known as pleasers, lap dances, and champagne rooms is exciting. Did you know that there is a racing horse called Champagne Room? We'll start with thongs. Thongs in topless clubs today are covered by very strict regulations. They have to cover the front area and be wide enough and tall enough in the back to cover absolutely any openings, for fear of someone getting cursed, I guess. I myself have worked entirely in topless clubs of various kinds, and spend most of that time wearing the tiniest thongs allowed, while considering those three square inches, plus the soles of my feet, to be the darkest, most intimate parts of my body. But thongs have not always been a part of strip clubs. Thongs were definitely not invented by or for strip clubs. They are thought to be one of the most oldest forms of clothing worn by human beings, and they were mostly worn by men. They have been worn since as early as 42,000 BCE, as part of traditional clothing, from Africa to Japan to South America, mostly entirely by men, who have always needed a little more support in their nether regions. These didn't look much like stripper thongs, being made mostly from animal skins and cord. On the other hand, the emergence of the American thong is down to exotic dancing. In 1939, the mayor of New York passed an order requiring exotic dancers to cover themselves. The average woman at the time was still wearing bloomers. As a result, dancers wore long, wide-legged shorts with thong backs, which must have looked really weird. The thong as we know it jumped to the mainstream in 1974 with the glorious thong bikini, again as a response to bans on nudity, this time on the beaches of Los Angeles. Many people in the U.S. still found thongs to be too scandalous, even on the beaches, but they took off in Latin cultures. Thongs were worn on stage and in music videos by Cher and Madonna in the 80s, while they were still being sold as scanty panties. These were sold at what was basically sex shops, along with edible underwear and crotchless panties. Regular thong underwear for seekers of everyday ass floss that they were probably hoping to show off at the end of the night became popular in the 90s. This was spearheaded by the ever so groundbreaking show Baywatch. Sellers emphasized the discreetness and comfort of thongs rather than their naughtiness. Jockey's slogan was, comfort is why she wears it, although many women would disagree. The thong even had a walk-on role in the Monica Lewinsky scandal when it became part of the news that Monica Lewinsky had showed Bill Clinton the straps of her thong when she had raised her jacket as part of flirting with him. Enough people didn't know what the thong was that they thought that she had to have removed her bottoms to have shown him her underwear. Amid all the manure that people threw at Monica, this was just before people began wearing high-rise thongs with their low-rise jeans. Coincidence? Maybe not. It was around this point that Victoria's Secret put on their first runway show, displaying the risque garments. The thong song ended the 90s by summing up the Western obsession. Exotic dancers had been wearing thongs for about 60 years at this point. Men in the Western world were still wearing thongs also. There was a man in my hometown growing up who used to tan in the downtown park wearing only a leather thong and a leather hat. He was a local fixture. Bodybuilders and male strippers did their posing and flexing in thongs just like they do today. Everyone from Calvin Klein to Kmart sells men's thongs, and they are particularly popular as swimwear and underwear in Europe. Thong sales have been down since 2011 in all parts of the Western world, but they certainly haven't lost traction in strip clubs. Important to strip clubs and strippers is the type of thongs. Thongs range a great deal, from how low they dip in the front, to the shape of the back, some even go over your shoulders like crotch suspenders. My main club didn't allow those. Such party poopers. Girls at full nude clubs can do a lot more with their thongs, but as I mentioned earlier, thongs in topless clubs are very regulated. So strippers control what they can, choosing a Y back, which splits in the middle and goes over the middle or top of your butt, or less frequently, a T back, 
where the flossing bit meets the waistband in a T. I think the T-backs are less flattering, personally, but they are more vintage and less uniquely strippery. There is also a B-string which makes a triangle right at the top of your butt, but I've never seen them worn in clubs, only seen them sold in regular stores. You can also get thongs with bejeweled bands or reflective trim sewn into the waistbands, and these are my favorite, because I think they're pretty. My other favorite is a nude thong. Guys come up to the tip rail with a dollar or two just to check and see if you're actually wearing one. On to pasties. Once again, an invention to get around laws controlling the exposure of women's bodies. They are worn in some counties and states around the USA. Thankfully, only one club that I've ever worked in required pasties because they can be expensive, hard to use, unpredictable, and rough on your skin. In the 1920s, anti-topless laws popped up and the ever-resourceful dancers got around them by covering just their areolas with pasties. Circus performing burlesque dancers incorporated this into their looks, largely in Paris. U.S. performing burlesque dancers started picking this trend up in the 20s and 30s. Not to be subdued, dancers designed pasties shaped like hearts, with sequins on them, and even tassels. If you work somewhere where you have to wear pasties, you can find really great ones on Etsy. You can wear them even if you aren't a dancer. Lots of pop stars do. And they're popular at pride parades, music festivals, or just worn discreetly with see-through clothing and backless dresses. What about you? Do you prefer a sparkly, neon pink, tasseled cover-up, or a nude thong and a piece of nude tape that's barely there? Leave your thoughts in the comments. There will be several more of these, so keep an eye out. In the meanwhile, there's a video called How to Be a Douchebag in the Strip Club over here. Much love!